today. We gather this morning called forth by love to find joy and comfort in one another, to bear each other's burdens and celebrate the mystery of life. Come, let us worship together. Please be seated.
light this chalice as a symbol of reunion. We reunite in our sanctuary to share the flow of our hearts with one another, to celebrate our fountains of joy, to ride out our storms of grief, to guide one another down the rapids of transformation, to rest together on ponds of stillness. Today we, we honor, honor the spirit of water, its many forms, and its, its life-giving essence. Good morning. It's time now for the Time for All Ages, something a little different this year. So I'm going to ask everyone to enjoy this story from wherever you are, be it in the sanctuary or at home over Zoom. And this is partially for privacy reasons because we are broadcasting this out to the whole world to see over the internet, which is awesome, um, but also partially for safety. Just remain where you are. And I hope you'll enjoy this story. This is a Sufi tale, and it is called The Tale of the Journeying Stream. A stream, from its course in far-off mountains, passing through every kind and description of countryside, at last reached the sands of the desert. Just as it had crossed every other barrier, the stream tried to cross this one, but found that as fast as it ran, it ran into the sand and disappeared. It was convinced, however, that its destiny was to cross this desert. And yet, there was no way. Now, a hidden voice from the desert itself whispered, the wind crosses the desert, and so can the stream. The stream objected that it was dashing itself against the sand and only getting absorbed that the wind could fly, and that's why the wind is able to cross the desert. Well, by hurtling yourself in your own accustomed way, you cannot get across. You will either disappear, or you'll become a marsh. You must allow the wind to carry you over to your destination. But how could this happen? Well, said the desert, by allowing yourself to be absorbed by the wind. Now this idea was not very acceptable to the stream. After all, it had never been absorbed before. It did not want to lose its individuality. And once having lost it, how was one to know that it could ever be regained? The wind, said the sand, performs this function. It takes up water, carries it over the desert, and then lets it fall again. And falling as rain, the water then becomes a river. Ah, uh, how can I know that this is true, said the water. Well, said the desert, it is so. And if you do not believe it, you cannot become more than a quagmire. And even that could take many, many years. And it certainly is not the same as a stream. But can I not just remain the same stream that I am today? No, said the desert. Your essential part is carried away and forms a stream again. You are called what you are, even today, because you do not know which part of you is the essential one. When the water heard this, certain echoes of memory began to arise in the thoughts of that stream. Dimly, it remembered a state in which, or some part of it, at least, had been held in the arms of the wind. It also remembered, or did it quite, that this was the real thing, not necessarily the obvious thing, though, to do. And the stream raised its vapor into the welcoming arms of the wind, which gently and easily bore it upwards and along, letting it fall softly as soon as they reached the root of a mountain many, many miles away. And because it had its doubts, the stream was able to remember and record more strongly in its mind the details of that experience. It reflected, yes, now I have learned my true identity.
The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas, environmental action, economic justice, civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. Our recipient through September is one of our partners in economic justice and racial justice work. Walt Whitman Elementary School in Pontiac is one of our most cherished and longtime partners. Our work at Walt Whitman includes stocking and operating a mobile library and tutoring. Half of this morning's offering will be used to buy books for Walt Whitman Library and supplies for the school year. Let there be an offering of support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. We are a church of open minds. We are a church of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. We've come now to the time in our service that we are centering in prayer. Before we get started, I just want to say I love everything that's happened that's weird so far today. I don't know if you picked up, but so many little things have happened, and it's perfect. Because church is about being human, out loud, in public, and I think it's great. And probably we're done with all that now, so let's all just take a minute to just... <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> you never know, so let's all just hang in here together. We'll start now with a sharing of joys and sorrows from our congregation. We begin this morning with a few joys. We have a joy from Cindy McLeod. Cindy says, I am grateful to Sarah Constantakis for doing such a great job keeping communications alive during the pandemic. She provided a great sense of continuity. I personally will share in that joy as well. Thank you, Sarah. Really, our whole staff has been excellent during this time. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Cindy McLeod is very joyful today. We have a second one from Cindy. Cindy shares that on September 10th, Amy Smalley wrapped up their 57th year of life. Cindy continues, I am joyful and ever grateful for every minute that I get to share with them. May they have many more healthy years to come. Happy birthday, Amy. And we move now on to the seasons of life that are a little bit chillier, a bit more gray. Heidi Kapsikabatha starts with a joy for being together again in person and also a hope that those in this country who are still resisting vaccination will have a change of mind. She continues, we must be in unison as we fight the pandemic. Our divisions are the enemy. Next, we have a sorrow from Larry Larson that I think many of us, all of us, can share in this sorrow. Larry says, I am remembering 9-11 with great sorrow, and I know we all are. And we close with a sorrow from the Zamborskis. The Zamborskis tell us we had to put our dog Charlie to sleep on Tuesday after a battle with cancer. We wish we'd had more time with him as he brought so much love and joy and laughter into our lives, but we're thankful for the years that we had and we will cherish the memories. I invite you now to move further with me into a spirit of prayer and reflection. Spirit of love and life, we are gathered this morning in a way that is familiar and also new. We gather with our hearts open as well as with a bit of trepidation. We gather in the joy of what it is to be human with all of our foibles and all of our quirks. And we gather in the acknowledgement and recognition of our shortcomings as a species. We do remember this day, 9-11, and the division and the all that it brought to our country, the way that it changed us forever. May we move ever forward towards a spirit of reconciliation, a spirit of love and trust. We are mindful this morning of those who are joining us via Zoom. We are hopeful that we will continue to have a spirit of unity as we continue in our new multi-platform life. May we be held in patience and love and accountability. May be so. Amen and blessed be.
The Sunday after Labor Day has special importance for many Unitarian Universalist congregations. This is our homecoming, the official start to the church year. Homecoming strikes the balance between the familiar and the new. We are together again, singing the same songs, about to participate in the same ritual, and yet we are not all in this sanctuary. Many of us are worshiping offsite using our new multi-platform technology. You guys, it's going to be different. We will certainly, certainly encounter differences this year, but we bring with us the comfort and the security of our past. The first water communion was held in 1980 when Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview created a worship service for the Women and Re Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. The convocation was held in our state capital, Lansing. The ritual they developed uses water as a symbol of our interconnectedness. It is in this spirit that our congregation celebrates water communion each year. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a promise that has been built over decades and entrusted to our care. We are stewards of this community and our traditions. As rivers gather to form the ocean, we gather to form BUC. We come from different backgrounds and identities. We have different gifts and ideas. These differences are our strength. Each of us has something to offer to the life of our beloved community. In our individual diversity, we are one community. As Unitarian Universalists, we value the interconnected web of life. We are connected in ways that are mysterious, yet simple, profound, but also ordinary. In this church, we do not share a common belief. Instead, we share a mutual concern for one another. The value of human relationships is the core of our tradition. Our religious life is built on covenants that call us to healthy and accountable relationships. These relationships embolden and support our search for truth and meaning. We don't always know where that space exploration will lead us, but we know that we will find shelter in this beloved community. As we navigate the waters of our individual faith journeys, we find rest and renewal in each other. Our church is a place of comfort and a catalyst for change. We are comforted by shared traditions and familiar worship expressions. We gather on Sunday mornings to share stories and songs that remind us of our church's history and the congregational life that we've built. At the same time, our Unitarian Universalist faith challenges us to remain open and curious. We should never be satisfied that we have found the one right answer to life's big questions. In worship services, we encounter that which is beyond our individual lives, yet deeply a part of who we are. Some of us call this God. Some call it the spirit of life or the power of human community. Our church is not a place of answers, but a place of bold questions. Our worship life is a container for these questions, both supporting and moving us forward. In our congregation, we sell up, celebrate water communion in a similar fashion to the first water communion so many years ago. Each family is invited to bring with them a small amount of water that they have collected over the summer, perhaps from an adventure, perhaps from an adventure in their backyard, perhaps from the sink outside because you forgot. We'll be invited to come forward and pour the water together into this bowl as a symbol of us returning from our individual lives into our shared community life. This is the part that's always the hardest. So I'm going to tell you, we're gonna start with the choir you're going to go back around and come up the center. And then we'll next move to the window section. You'll go back around and come up the center. And then the ushers will dismiss the center sections alternating so that we form a single line. We'll come up the center. You'll go back to your chairs like that. 
we'll have worship associates and ushers posted throughout to help you along the journey. <laughs> Godspeed and good luck. <laughs> While we have our traditional water communion, we also have an alternative water communion for those of you who are worshiping with us via Zoom, those of you who do not wish to be on camera, or those of you who have mobility concerns. Our Director of Religious Education, Nico Van Ostrand, will be leading that ritual once we get ourselves together out here. Nico will be reading, leading that from the pulpit. And at that, we will begin our water communion. you to share in another water communion ritual in this way, inspired by a ritual from Darcy Elizabeth Hedgick Lane. This is the water of scarcity, not enough water or justice or beds or breaths this year. I invite you to bring into your thoughts an experience of scarcity from this past year. May we do what we must to bring an end to this drought. This is the water that carries us, the transformations and changes that swept us, whether we were ready for them or not. I invite you to bring into your imagination a change from this past year. May we flow through these changes with grace, and wonder. And this is the water of storms, the confusion and conflict and anger and worry. I invite you to bring into your mind a storm from this past year. May we find the strength in each other that we need to weather this storm. This is the water that sustains us, the joy and hope and connection that gives us energy. Bring into your heart something that helped sustain you in this past year. May we gather up that joy and hope and witness that there is enough here to sustain us all. These waters of scarcity, of change, of storms, and hope will flow together then with the other sacred waters brought together and held by this community.
It really is the best seat in the house. <laughs> that means I can see everybody and it's really beautiful. <laughs> so earlier, we heard a Sufi story about water that had reached a desert and an impasse. The water knew that it had to cross the desert. It was the water's destiny to cross the desert but it didn't know how. It spent time and energy throwing itself at the impossible task only to find itself exhausted. The water couldn't cross the desert because water isn't made that way. It just couldn't. In order to cross the desert and fulfill its purpose, it had to change and it needed the wind. At first, the water resisted the wind. It didn't want to change. It didn't want to risk losing its identity. Water can be stubborn like that. Eventually, though, 
It called forth memories of being part of something else, a river, a cloud. In fact, it even remembered times when it had been supported by the wind before. The water heard the sand speak its future, and it relented its stubborn resistance. It allowed itself to be embraced by the wind, and it was carried across the desert to a mountaintop. Now, it must be said that when the water reached the other side of the desert and the top of the mountain, it did change. It became snow, so it wasn't the same. Or was it? Water is always water, after all. Even when it's snow, even when it's vapor, at its most elementary level, water is always water. The only difference is the speed at which the molecules move. So it's both true that the water was changed through its interaction with the wind and also true that water cannot be changed. My beloved, we too have crossed a desert. Some 18 months ago, we reached a stark and unforgiving desert that we knew that we had to cross, but we didn't know how, and we were afraid to cross it, but we just, we had to. And so we threw ourselves at the inescapable truth that we couldn't do what we had always done. Well, we couldn't do what we had always done in the way we were used to doing it. And we found our wind, too. It was not Zoom. It was not. <laughs> Zoom was there, but let's be real, Zoom was a part of the desert. <laughs> it was bad. <coughs> Those of you joining us at home, I hope the sound quality is better. We're going to find out. <laughs> the desert was vast and it was treacherous, but we changed and we found our wind. And that wind carried us and it left us different, but the same. The wind was the spirit of our congregation, and maybe another spirit, another spirit that transcends and enfolds our congregation. There is something among us today that defies description, something ineffable and emergent that gives us strength and comfort. I hope that we can all agree to that language, ineffable and emergent, mysterious, yet a part of us. We are, all of us, together, held and carried along by that spirit. We arrive this morning in wonder that we are together in this new phase of our journey, a part of something that we have made together emergent, and yet is something that is bigger than any one of us alone, transcendent. And for those of you joining us remotely, I mean you too. Even though you're not here physically, you're here, just as much as anyone else. There is a spirit in this congregation, and it has held us, and it has carried us across the desert. And you joining us remotely are arriving in the same place as us, different, but not. On Homecoming Sunday of 2019, if any of us had been asked what we thought Homecoming 2021 would be like, I promise you, none of us would have said this. None of us. It was never in our minds that we would be coming together after 18 months of worshiping exclusively on Zoom, which is ludicrous. Zoom is a teleconferencing software that is partly reliable and not meant for worship, especially music. But we did that. We did that, we actually did that. And here we are, awestruck and in reverence of this moment, this moment of realizing and embodying transformation. Still us, always us, but not the same. At our elementary level, still us but moving at a different frequency. We have made it across that desert and now we have arrived here at a mountaintop. This is also not where we expect it to be, a mountaintop, but yet here we are. 
it is wrongheaded to say the phrase post-pandemic as much as we might be tempted. We are not post-pandemic. Instead, let us say that we are at this stage of the pandemic, whatever this stage might be. We are, nonetheless, on the other side of the desert, but we are not happily moving through a well-worn stream of predictability. The Sufi story we heard went on to say that when the water came to the mountaintop, it turned back into a river and it continued to flow. I believe that that is our future too. We will become that river and we will flow, but that's gonna take some time. Rivers that come down from mountains do not flow at a gentle pace or have an easy course. They turn into waterfalls, and turn into floods and mudslides. They are powerful, if not always elegant. We're not going back to the way that things were. If we've learned anything, it's that we have no control over what happens next, yet we have some ways of predicting what will happen, but there are unknown variables that can cause rapid changes and disruptions to our predictions. But we learned something else. We learned about our adaptability and our love for each other and for this beloved community. We are more resourceful than we are limited. We have every reason to believe that we cannot, we will not be broken. We are stronger than that. We are more flexible than that. We have been carried by an ineffable quality, a spirit of resilience and commitment across the desert. It won't leave now. We have drawn forth memories of holding our individual identities while also being a community. We're not going to stop that. We learn to put, our side, our, put aside our personal desires to create something that serves the whole. Of course, we wanted to have church in our sanctuary. Those of you who are with us in spirit but not physically, we know that you want to be here. We want you to be here. We've all always wanted to be together in this room. But we couldn't. And some of us still can't do it. There's always a chance, beloved, that we won't be able to keep doing it. This isn't over. The pandemic, too, has changed, but it's not over. All of us want to be together in the sanctuary, but we are willing to let go of our personal wants in order to care for the whole. That is a part of the spirit of this congregation, too. Preservation of the whole through meaningful, intentional compromise. That's deeply a part of who we are and who we will always be, just at a different frequency. And so we find ourselves on a mountaintop this morning. We feel exalted and proud, and we have every right to be. This is our moment to reflect on our journey. Look at what we did. Look at what we've done. And savor that. This is a glorious and a beautiful day in the history of Birmingham Unitarian Church. We've arrived at a new place. But gird yourself up, beloved. We don't get to stay here long. This is our day for gratitude and peace. But water is never still. Well, some water is still a quagmire, as we heard in the story, but that's not us. It's never been us. We can't be, we won't be satisfied with stagnation. It's time for us to start the next part of our journey. We get a little bit of rest, and then we're off. The great adventure continues ahead of us. There are hills and dales and rocks and ledges and canyons to explore and to create. There will be times that we will be a gentle flowing brook and times that we will be a rushing rapid. I'm voting for gentle brook, but we'll see. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know where we will be taken next. But we do know that we're going to get there. We made it across a desert. 
We made it through something that was vast and terrifying and awful, but we made it. And we're on the other side of that. We will hit another seemingly impossible moment. And when we do, we will call forth the memory of this time, of this day, this time when the wind carried us across the desert and we found ourselves on top of a mountain. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to rise now for the Unitarian Universalist National Anthem. <laughs> Go now into this world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love, go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.